Hello, this is David with Outrider, and today I'm going to explain how to remove and reinstall the rear wheel on a mid-drive motor equipped transition. Uh, in particular, this one also has the Shimano DI2 gear hub, which makes it just a touch more complicated, but uh, this should explain what's necessary for pretty much any configuration for mid-drive. Uh, to start, we'll take a 15 millimeter wrench and loosen the main axle bolts it should be on there pretty good. And we'll pull those out. We don't need to get them completely off the machine, but these washers, this is specific to that Shimano kit, need to come away from the machine because there's little teeth that grab the frame. So that needs to be free of the frame like so. We'll do that on the other side as well. And these washers may be jammed in there a little bit. They do see a fair bit of force under pedaling. So you can use the wrench to kind of lever on that a little bit. This one's a little less uh, imperative to get away from the frame since the teeth are facing downwards. So that should fall out with the wheel. Uh, next, we need to worry about getting some of the tension off of this chain. Uh, best thing to do is up front actually to remove it from the main chain wheel, grab some slack from down below, and back pedal the rotation. We'll let that fly in the breeze. That gives us chain to work with back here. And we'll also need to get our chain tensioner out of the way. That'll make things much easier for us. It's a five millimeter Allen key. And we'll remove this completely. And we can just let that dangle, it'll be fine. So now we've got the chain pretty well free on this side. We just need to worry about the belt on the opposite side. It's gonna hold us up. Now this belt is currently under tension, so it's not gonna want to slip off of there. But if we encourage it from the underside and pull it towards the frame while rolling that wheel, you'll see that it starts to move outwards on that pulley. And you don't need to push too terribly hard. You're just trying to coax it over little by little. And once it's maybe over a little over half of that belt is on the outside of that pulley, I'm going to start to really push harder and hopefully get the front of that belt. There it goes. <laughs> and our wheel is off. Oh, an important reminder, if you've got the DI2 kit, there is the motor shift cable wire that needs to come off. Very easy to forget, I almost did. Make sure that's removed. I'll the chain, and our wheel is free. Now we can do any maintenance, changing tires, tubes, etc. Uh, maintenance to the hub is also a good thing to do at this time. Um, reinstallation is pretty similar to taking it off. You want to make sure that you've got your washers all the way out before you try to slide that back on the frame. They'll get in the way if you don't. As you're putting it on, you're gonna loop the chain over on the one side, and at the very least you need the belt over that axle on the other. And we'll just lift it back up, being careful not to force anything. It'll go in there without really wrenching on it. If it's, something's holding you up, stop and figure out what it is rather than just pushing harder. I just put that on there, thumb tight to keep it from dropping. I'll do the same on the other side. And you'll notice like this washer has those teeth that need to line up in that drop out. We'll make sure that those are sitting where they need to be. I got that down, just thumb tight to keep that from moving. The shift cable wire, it doesn't look like there's any sort of latch on that, but if you push on it good and hard, there's a nice little click. I'm sure the camera is not gonna pick that up, but it won't come out 
if it's clipped in. Uh, so we've got that on there, just finger tight for now. We'll go ahead and put our chain tensioner back on, which you should be able to read the Shimano text in the orientation that it wants to be. And I'll need that five millimeter wrench. And this will be, may need to remove, yeah, this is gonna be easier if I put that chain to the inside of the sprocket. That's gonna give me room to screw this in. This has rather fine threads on it. So again, if it doesn't feel like it's going in easily, back it out and try again. Tighten that down. That doesn't need to be crazy tight. And then we'll make sure our chain is back on our sprocket teeth. And that should, you may need to give it a little hand down there. That runs freely. Up front we'll do just the opposite of what we did before. Take our chain slack from the top get it situated and just pull it forward one rotation. The chain is now situated. Now we can worry about the belt on the other side, but not before we get the axle firmly tightened. Uh, again, we want to make sure those teeth nest into the frame of the bike before really clamping that down. one side and I'm pushing up on the wheel to make sure that it's seated in the top of those dropouts. And I'm not being uh, too aggressive on tightening these, but they do need to be on there firmly. It is possible to strip out those nuts if you've got a long wrench and you're really pushing on it. So now to get the belt situated again, we'll take from the bottom and grab just the edge of the belt. Actually before that, we'll make sure that this is sitting on the front pulley in between those two flanges. We'll take from the lower end, situate that in the teeth and just start to rotate that wheel. Should a little help up here. There we go. And if you rotate it a couple times, our belt is now situated. As long as it's not sitting proud of the pulley, you're fine. Uh, these frames do vary a little in how the pulley alignment ends up being, but this being nearly flush is perfectly acceptable. And with that, the rear wheel is reinstalled. <coughs>